Hey teachers! Over the past year, we have talked a lot about virtual whiteboards here on this channel, such as which is the best one to use, and we've done tutorials for a lot of those different virtual whiteboards. And one of the most popular ones has been whiteboard.chat. So in today's video, I wanna answer a specific question that I've been getting about whiteboard.chat, and that is how do you create group or collaborative whiteboards that students can work in together? Real quick, I do just wanna ask you that if you have not already done so, please just take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel. We create all of the content here on this channel for free and when you take the time to do that, it enables us to keep producing more free content for all of you. So thank you very much for doing that. And now let's dive in to whiteboard.chat. I do just wanna let you know that if you are looking for a video that goes over all of the features and functions of whiteboard.chat or at least a lot of them, make sure to check out our whiteboard.chat tutorial, which I have linked down in the description for this video for even more details and ideas for whiteboard.chat. In this video, we're gonna look specifically at how to create group and collaborative boards. And these boards are helpful for a couple different purposes. One, you can put students in small groups or partners and you can have them working, collaborating, sharing ideas together. And the thing I like about whiteboard.chat is it's very easy to monitor your students while they're working on their group whiteboards. You can also use this for small group or remediation. So let's say you're teaching your whole class and you have a few students that are struggling, you can pull those students into a collaborative board with you and provide remediation just for them. So I wanna show you two different ways that you can create collaborative boards inside of whiteboard.chat. The first one that I'm gonna show you right now over on my computer is I'm going to show you how to get into whiteboard.chat and start collaborating straight away. So this is gonna be your easiest option. Okay, so you're gonna start by going to whiteboard.chat whiteboard.chat, which you can see up here. And the easiest way to start collaborating is to click on start drawing, and then you're just gonna click start collaborating. Now, anybody who joins this board will be able to collaborate with you. And to share this board with students, you're just gonna click on invite, and you've got lots of different options here. They can scan the QR code. You can copy and paste this link into something like an email or a Google site. You can also copy the classroom code and they can go to whiteboard.chat and paste the classroom code in. And then you can also share in Google Classroom or on Teams, but anyone that you share this board with will automatically be able to collaborate with you. All right, so the way that I just showed you is probably the easiest way to get started with a collaborative board, but I wanna show you another way that you can also create these group boards because this other way that I'm gonna show you, it allows you to customize your group boards a little bit more. So let's go ahead and jump back on the computer. I'm gonna show you how to name your group boards, how to create random group boards, how to make these collaborative group boards a little bit more customizable. Okay, so another option for collaborating would be starting from a board where you're teaching. So I have this board here. I am teaching fraction concepts. I started this board just by clicking on start teaching from the homepage. And and then I uploaded task cards to different pages. And I did that just by clicking on upload and then uploading these JPEGs of task cards from my computer. Now, if you want more information how to do that, make sure to check out our whiteboard.chat tutorial, which is linked down in the description. But let's say I'm teaching fractions. I've got these task cards up here. I can look at my grid view and see each of my students working independently. So I can see LaToya is working on task card one and I can see what she's written so far. I can see that currently student two is working on task card two and he hasn't written anything there. But let's say that I want them to collaborate and work together at solving the problems on these task cards. To do that, I'm just gonna click on the participants panel up here, and then I'm going to click on create group board. Now, when you do that, you will see all of the people who are part of this board right now. So I want 
my two students to be able to work together and I can also add myself to it if I want so that I can work alongside them, maybe do some remediation if I need to. But I'm just going to have these two select it and then I'm going to give it a name. So we'll just say fraction task cards and I'm going to click on create group. Now I can see there's a section right here that says groups. And I can click on this eye icon anytime to see exactly what it is that they're doing so I can watch them working together here. I can also, anytime I want to see the group, I'm just going to click on that participant panel up here. And if I want to edit the group, like let's say I want to add more students to it or I want to add myself to it, I'm just going to click on that pencil icon and it will open this up again. Now one last thing, if we click on the participants panel, let's say they have finished working on this, I can also click the trash can and completely delete the group board if I need to. Now the one other thing that I want to show you with this is anytime you come down to grid view, you can always see what your students are working on. So remember initially we saw that I think this was Sean's board and this was student two's board. Now you'll notice that it says group fraction task cards. So now you're because they're working in a group board and they're not working in an in, they're not working independently anymore, you'll see that their group boards appear. Now if you delete these and they go back to working independently, you will see their independent boards again. So just a few other small things that I want to show you when it comes to group boards. If you click up here with the participants panel again, you can also click on create group board and there's a few different options. So let's say you want to pre-create your group. So you want to go ahead and create separate groups before you even start teaching. So I could come into this board and pre-create groups. So I could say group one, group two, and group three. And I could click pre-create groups. Now you'll see in addition to the fraction task cards, those groups appeared here. Now I have a couple of options. I could either click the edit icon and I could go in at any time and I could add students to this or I could share or invite students to any of these boards and when I invite them, they will then be a part of that group. So that is if you want to pre-create groups one other thing I want to show you with the group boards is if you click on this, you can also auto create groups. So let's say I want to have four groups. I can type in four and click auto create and whiteboard.chat will automatically create the groups for me. Personally, I don't like using this option. I like to have a little bit more control over what students are in what group. So I don't use that too often, but it is an option for you. So there you have it. That is a couple different ways that you can be collaborating and creating these group collaborative boards inside of whiteboard.chat. Like I said, I like the collaborative features inside of whiteboard.chat because it's very easy to monitor different groups at the same time. And I think these group boards are just a lot of fun for students. So those of you who are actually using whiteboard.chat, I would love to hear from you. What are some tips and tricks for using whiteboard.chat that you've learned? Or do you have any other questions about whiteboard.chat? Go ahead and leave those down in the comments. Actually, this video today was inspired by the comments because this was a question that kept coming up in the comments quite frequently. So you never know what your comments may lead to. And until next time, happy teaching.